Welcome to Blockchain Recorded, the podcast for the tech curious, where we talk about anything and everything related to the exponentially evolving crypto, blockchain, and Web 3.0 space. Our mission is simple, to share knowledge, facilitate discourse, and help evolve education in blockchain fundamentals, decentralization solutions, and relevant use cases for today's digital economy. We at Blockchain Recorded are not registered investment advisors and do not deal with financial or trading token elements, nor offer any licensed financial services. The content of this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only, while the opinions of all parties involved are their own. I'm your host, Nina Tserar, and now let's talk blockchain. So before I introduce our guest today, I have a couple of brief updates for our community. We invite everyone to join us on Twitter Spaces, where we pre-stream each episode the day before it goes public on all major podcast platforms. For the platform list, visit our website, blockchainrecorded.com. We also have an NFT program with Blockchain Recorded Community NFTs. These can be claimed from our homepage. So check us out, visit our website, and follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube for updates and potential airdrops. This episode is dedicated to the Web3 Stronger Together Ecosystem Initiative and its first virtual summit, which took place between March 1st and March 4th, 2023, in Evelyn's Metaverse, a virtual platform uniting several hundred Web3 leaders and thinkers, over 100 projects and speakers, and over 5,000 attendees from across the world. The purpose of Web3 Stronger Together, with which Blockchain Recorded is a proud media partner, is to demonstrate to the crypto community that the Web3 ecosystem is strong, solidary, active, and committed to furthering innovation despite the status of the market and nature of price speculations. It emphasizes the importance of fairness, inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability to furthering healthy Web3 fundamentals. The summit included many panel discussions with assigned topics, which Blockchain Recorded is redistributing in audio form. The second panel discussion on March 1st again covered the topic of the metaverse. The speakers were Hadil Arja, the co-founder of Frontline and Focus XR, Luis Bravo Martins, CMO at Kit AR, Charmaine Short, CEO and Web3 consultant at Ediverse Limited, Jacek Stutsinski, the CCO of AdShares, and Bei Wang, the co-founder and CMO of Straight Fire Studios. The panel takes a slightly different topic turn from marketing and advertising and discusses the metaverse with respect to human interaction. Speakers define the metaverse, discuss tangible applications focusing on social impact, and touch upon the importance of marketer responsibility, setting ethical standards, user protection, and much more. The following is the panel's discussion hosted by Laurent Perello, the leader behind the Web3 Stronger Together ecosystem initiative. Uh, second uh, panel discussion for this uh, first uh, Web3 Stronger Together virtual summit. Thanks for being there. Um, I'm really glad to uh, host uh, our speakers today. I'm sure they will bring a really interesting uh, point of view, share their experience. Uh, without uh, spending too, too much time on this introduction, uh, we will talk about the metaverse, a new era of marketing and advertising. I also have uh, some experience in the domain. Uh, I was in the advertising industry. It was uh, my, my first business uh, 28 years ago now. And uh, let's let's start uh, by, could, could you uh, introduce yourself? Um, I can go first. Um, so, oh no, bye. Okay, sorry. Bye. Oh, okay, very sure. Very good, uh, very good. Thank you. Uh, I will go first. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bei Wang. Uh, you can just call me Bei. Greetings from the Netherlands. I'm the co-founder and currently the CMO of Straight Fire. With Straight Fire, we actually have two components. One is Straight Fire Space, uh, from where we developed the world's first uh, NFT social dApp, which is still in the beta version. And uh, next to that, we are also a creative studio because all the co-founders, including myself, uh, we have a background in creative industry. So through Street File uh, Studio, we call ourselves like um, we like to call ourselves the explorer of the metaverse. And we like to also address that we tell stories in 3D worlds, characters and experiences. Besides uh, Straight Fire, I'm also a university teacher and researcher focusing on creative industry. Um, so, yeah, passionate about Web3 because um, we are all for creator-driven and, and creator economy. So, yeah, looking forward to this uh, exciting discussion with you guys. Thank you, Ray. Who's the, the, the next? Luis? 
Sure. <laughs> uh, hi all. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you all for for being here. I'm really looking forward to the discussion. So, um, well, my name is is Luis. I have been working for more than 20 years in the intersection of marketing and technology. So, I, I I was fortunate enough to see the first iteration of the internet, and I'm I'm really happy to to be here alongside with uh, so many people that are looking towards the third iteration of the internet, um, and with so many others uh, listening to us. Um, at this time, I am. Chief Marketing Officer at KTR, uh, which is an uh, industrial augmented reality uh, platform. And uh, last year, I spent uh, most of my, uh, let's say, free time or my nights burning the midnight oil, uh, writing this book. Uh, it's called Metaverse, uh, See Beyond the Hype. And Congrats. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, it was launched like uh, beginning of this month, uh, and it's available on uh, Amazon, Barnes and & Noble, and and what we talk about uh, or what we tried with this book, me and uh, my co-author Samantha G. Wolf, uh, was to bring uh, the discussion of the metaverse to, uh, well, everyone outside our bubble. So that's that's one of the, the main purposes that, uh, that I had or that we had with the book. And uh, I really hope that everyone that is listening that is not inside the, the Web3, the XR, the, well, the, the metaverse space uh, can actually, uh, well, uh, give it a, a go and, and let me know also what you thought. Besides that, uh, I also collaborate with um, associations like uh, XR Safety Initiative. And I, I also would like to, well, ask anyone, everyone in the, the audience if they want to know a bit more about safety and privacy in the metaverse to also explore uh, that uh, that organization. And I think I went well beyond my <laughs> my time. <laughs> but thank you anyway. Thanks to you. Welcome, uh, uh, Adil. Uh, Yatsek. Okay, thank you so much. I'm a connector by Gallup. My name is Jacek Studzinski, and I'm a chief communications officer for AdShares. And AdShares is the blockchain technology created especially for advertising specifically for advertising looking at looking at all the ailments of advertising at all the benefits of decentralized and you know a distributed ledger technology how it can bring transparency fairness how it can bring the consumer into the advertising equation where you can actually own a piece of the advertising system uh, so that's it. A apart from that, I am looking for patterns. So I'm already, I'm already excited to hear that you, Laurent, you have 28 years of experience in advertising because I spent 23 years in branding, advertising, communication, creative boutiques and agencies. So, uh, and that made me, and the last, last year, I just, just like Luis Yu, I spent my days, nights and weekends studying Web3, the metaverse, and just like you, trying to bring this new world to my audiences, you know, acting out, um, presenting during different conferences and uh, actually exploring the metaverses myself. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking with experienced, senior like-minded people lovely to see you all and i hope the audience will have will enjoy it too thanks to, thanks to you shaman hi uh, thanks for having me here uh, i've been in web3 since 2019 and my company ataverse provides consultancy on web3 blockchain education nft marketing strategies um, for startups or brands and we help onboard people to blockchain technology uh, including the metaverse. So I've created various NFT galleries uh, in the spatial metaverse where creators can showcase their, their work uh, for buyers. Um, and I've also written a white paper on diversity, inclusivity and accessibility in the metaverse because there are a lot of people out there, for example, there's 1.2 billion people with disabilities in the world and Web2 applications are not really meeting their needs. Um, so that's where I'm coming at it from. It's to you, you know, it's it's really important what you, you just said, because it's Web3 Stronger Together. It's all about uh, inclusivity, diversity and uh, trying to onboard each one and everyone everywhere. You know, uh, without uh, letting some people uh, on the on the side, as we have seen with uh, the previous, uh, let's say, uh, uh, web iteration, I hope we will be able to really uh, 
give a chance to each one to join now and not uh, in a few years. Uh, so they, we, they will get uh, equal uh, chance uh, to onboard and experiment. Welcome, um, Adil. Could you quickly introduce yourself okay. and uh, tell us why you are involved in, in Web3 and welcome. Thank you. Fast. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here uh, with you all. So my name is Hadil Arja. I'm a journalist with more than 17 years of experience, co-founder of Frontline in Focus XR, a winner of Google News Initiatives uh, 2021. A Frontline in Focus is an independent news agent, uh, agency that uses VR and uh, AR to deliver human interest stories from complex zones. So being here with you to talk more about how can we use uh, uh, Metaverse to deliver stories, ongoing stories from conflict zone that people feel that it's uh, it's normal to read or to hear how to use Metaverse in this kind of stories. So nice to meet you all. I'm so happy to share my, our experience with you and to hear from the expert ones, of course. Uh, thanks to you. So let's let's now uh, dive uh, in the in the, the discussion uh, for which we are all here. Uh, I mean the metaverse, a new era of marketing and advertising. We want to to to, to start to um, maybe uh, simply define uh, what is your vision or definition of metaverse. We hear, is it what we can currently experiment, or do you see something something else? Personally, uh, when I'm uh, on, on stage as a speaker to talk about the metaverse, I uh, often say that for me, it's the pre prehistoric uh, time of the metaverse. We are far away from what it will be. It will be, uh, I, I think, at least for decades, uh, a, a period of experimentation till we find really what will match with a uh, uh, real uh, use case and uh, being able to deliver a tangible value Uh, for uh, each human uh, on Earth and uh, facilitating uh, their onboarding. We want to, 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 to start and explain uh, how it will change, disrupt, transform, maybe create new way uh, to, 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 to create, uh, to communicate and, and, and market. I can start. Welcome. So metaverse, in my opinion, it's a new way of thinking, of a new way of producing uh, products, you know, because today... If if you if we are going to say ten day ten years ago, who can say that uh, printed printed newspaper it will disappear and we we will uh, have our news by online uh, digital platform? So I think metaverse it's a new way of thinking, of new way of producing stories, of um, create this kind of interaction with the audience. Because today we need to speak uh, the new generation language. Because when when you produce a VR story, you know that you are uh, delivering these stories to new generation that they are familiar with VR headset. They are familiar with the AR. They, they know how to scan the QR code and they can be uh, in the middle of the events. And I think and all of us, we are trying to reach this point to, to create something This this something this product it should uh, create this impact because when when you create this impact you 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 will create an action after this uh, this product and and metaverse allows us to 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 use these tools and to create something different something more uh, to reach uh, audience a new audience a new generation and uh, I'm not an an expert in metaverse as. Uh, Uh, we don't know how to create an application, um, but but we know that there are a lot of applications we can use them in our industry, in media and industry. For example, if even if we are working on a normal documentary, it's um, uh, we use the normal cameras, but when you use this kind of uh, promotion by using 360 VR, you 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 will be sure that you have this impact because people they feel that they are in the middle of the event. They know what is really happening there. They feel it and they can see the fear of people. Today we are talking about the earthquake that strike Turkey and, and Syria. Syria. Yeah, everyone talking about it. But what what is What about you can put on your VR headset and you can see the fear uh, in the ground. You can feel that you can see that the, uh, every, uh, the building are uh, destroyed. So the interaction, it will be much different. So I think it's it's an amazing world. We really need to invest more in, in it. Uh, may I, Tui? 
Um, yeah, I because I also teach at school uh, at the university. So actually, I have a lot of discussion with those very young students. And I think at the same time, because I'm also a researcher, so I tend to kind of like dive into different narratives. And there is a lot of different definition or explanation in the last year, two years uh, in the media. Some of them are focusing really on specific area, I think, based on which uh, party or which stakeholder is talking about it. My personal favorite is quite simple. Uh, I use that also in one of the uh, school session. This is not from, from me, from our, uh, us, but it's from somewhere in the narrative. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, uh, Metaverse, is a net of, it's a network of 3D virtual worlds focused on social, net, uh, social connection. And I think uh, there's a lot of discussion often focusing application, technology part. But I think more and more we see all these cases. For example, some companies build a platform, but it turned out to be a failure. Or some big organizations want to create this virtual world and says this is the metaverse, but attract very little people, a few amount of people in it. And I think we keep forgetting about asking why. Why do we need to enter this world? So I think the social connection part is really important. When we started our studio, we made also a kind of like our way of vision of the metaverse from Straight Fire. And we like to kind of see this also as our North Star. So we kind of like see it. I agree with, um, with, uh, with you just now um, saying this is a new way of thinking. But we also think it is a new kind of ecosystem. But the emph emphasis should lie on the decentralized and creator driven aspect. And of course, in the end, uh, we also need to think about, is this an ecosystem that kind of like makes sure that human, humanity and technology coexist? Because I think I heard some uh, introduction you mentioned about uh, the data privacy or maybe like the potential risk. So that's why I think, you know, the, the definition is how our vision uh, visualizes it. And um, yeah. I, in the end, I think we should really see metaverse as a place that humanity and technology coexist in a symbiotic uh, relationship. Because in the end, if, if it's completely disconnected from humanity, and I guess that then, yeah, it loses its sole purpose. So, um, yeah. This is, uh, and I would guess it will lose in the end. Yes. I'd like to chip in with, uh, because there is something, I, I, when I think about the metaverse, I love thinking what it isn't. Because as we know, you know, I like when somebody did argues what the metaverse is, I love the example of the Venice Carnival. You know, you put on your mask, you become an avatar, you do something else, it, the world becomes something of a parallel, but can we call the carnival a metaverse, right? So I totally agree with you, Bay, that it's, it's a constellation of worlds where you interact with other people. But for me, personally, the core difference between a, a metaverse and a virtual world like Roblox or, or Minecraft is, like you said, the ownership, but also the economic aspect, the ownership and exchange and the creator economy. And I just wanted to, to just to mention to Adil that I just saw the Syrian earthquake and I fully support. Like when we heard it, we just reached out to all our friends in Turkey, wherever we have them, extending our, you know, sympathies and support. But when I saw the 360 scene, in your system that's that makes an impact and it makes a difference and i think this is what the metaverse is all about the experience almost on your skin in your system it's not just reading about something or arguing with somebody on facebook whom you don't see you don't know their emotions you don't know their personality their history and i think i agree with you it's a new way of thinking and the main difference is that web 2 was more about me and my expression and web 3 is all about us it's all around it Respect for you for calling it stronger together because that's what we are. Thanks to you, um, Shaman. Yeah, so I totally agree with what everyone's saying. Um, in, when it comes to uh, sort of content um, in sort of advertising, brands you know think they're being innovative and on trend um, if they're sort of creating sort of these experiences where people can be immersive and. As somebody said about the younger generation, so Walmart created this Walmart land, um, which was fun for kids. And there was no selling as such in there. It was just games and an immersive experience. You could have your friends in there and have a nice time. But at a deeper sort of subconscious level, people will be brand loyal 
to that supermarket now because they had such a great time and because it, it touched a part of them and it, it would make food shopping fun or whatever. So there's lots of clever ways um, that having a storefront in a, a metaverse can attract a new audience. You know, normally like children wouldn't want to go food shopping with their parents. It's boring. But now they'll look forward to going somewhere like Walmart. And it's just a shift in the way everybody needs to think. So we don't want to read lots of static text and adverts. We, these days, everybody says, oh, too long, don't read. You know, you can't hold anyone's attention um, with writing words down. You have to get people into an experience where they can just let loose, be themselves and be free. I, I really appreciate it. You, you, you all guys talk about experience and emotion and this coexistence with innovation, technology and uh, humans. I say it and repeat it uh, constantly. For me, uh, web free, uh, all innovation, it's first human building, delivering for humans. And uh, it's also one of the main goal of Web3 Stronger Together to, to put human on the scene rather than the technology first. Uh, thanks, uh, John. Uh, Luis? Yeah. So first, talking a bit about um, the, your question uh, or answering your question and then uh, going into uh, some of the topics that were already uh, approached. So regarding the metaverse and what it is, our definition in the book follows a bit of Tony Parisi's leads that, that the metaverse is the next stage of the internet. Uh, so we do believe that uh, there's there's been a convergence uh, happening for like uh, at least 30 years uh, and this technological convergence is right now accelerating because we have more and more and more technologies that are transformative and they are again like meshing mashing up together and we will eventually uh, reach a moment in time where uh, we'll have a persistent real-time spatialized internet uh, where we will be able to interact with digital the same way that we interact with the physical part of our lives and where we will take all the digital elements uh, all out of screens and allow us to uh, much more informally, much more easily to interact with these elements in our own physical world or in millions or infinite digital worlds that uh, might be also on screens or uh, in VR headsets. So clearly we're talking about a mashup of blockchain, we're talking about a mashup of uh, XR, of AI, of IoT, of many, many different technologies, quantum computing, others that are right now are not here yet, but that uh, in 10 to 15 years uh, will be, and hopefully that's that's where we're going. That's why I separate like what we have right now, which are like several technologies, several elements of this future metaverse, which we are interacting from uh, this vision of what the next iteration of the internet uh, will be. So regarding the approach uh, on, on the marketing side, clearly today we're seeing a lot of things happening due to these core, let's say, structure elements of the metaverse evolving. Like for instance, right now, uh, if you talk to a student starting, a design student or marketing student starting his course in September, he would not know the first thing about AI or generative AI. If you talk to a student starting uh, a course uh, next se this September, if he does not have generative AI in his uh, curriculum or in his sorry in, in his course curriculum, yes, um, that course is obsolete. So that's that's the speed at which we are running right now. Right, uh, ChatGPT changed. A lot of industries, but for sure, changed how we perceive storytelling, how we perceive copy editing, copywriting. It's crazy, right? So suddenly, what we have is a, a, or are a lot of elements being from AI, from blockchain, from XR that are coming together. Now, we, we need as marketing professionals, and I'm going to drop this l replying directly to the the several references uh, and several comments that were made regarding we need to to keep this human so we need to 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 take into account that the metaverse first of all is all about data that's why the big players are there 
they want to extract data. They want to have our data. Like for instance, Berkeley, I think it was a study from Berkeley U last week, uh, they uniquely identified 96% of 50,000, 50,000 users just by tracking three points like uh, uh, eye tracking and two hands, right? Uniquely, like they, they knew the names of those guys, right? That, that had that, that session. So again, privacy, safety, user data, which relates to self-sovereign identity, which relates to data sovereignty, all of that, it's clearly something that relates to a marketers, a marketing professionals uh, day in the metaverse, because that's going to affect us clearly. And we're right now building, so we, we have a say on that, but that clearly is something that I, I would love to, to, to know your thoughts about this topic. And, and the second one is regarding like uh, all the major elements that right now are, are popping up uh, to which uh, in each one of the, these technologies uh, that ha do help marketing, but at the same time, they are not being in any way regulated, but at the same time, they are being, well, I would like to, to, to hear your thoughts about how ethical they are. Namely, for instance, having like, again, avatars, uh, sorry, not avatars, but the digital beings, for instance, having the possibility of having conversational AIs participating in like, uh, in a talk right next to us, and they uh, might be like, for instance, talking a bit about how this wonderful service, this this club, for instance, in this virtual world is great. Maybe someone goes, passes by and hears what they say and they say, well, I'm, I'm going to try that because it, it sounds like by what they're saying that it's going to be great. They're not acknowledging, they're not aware that they just heard the talk between two AIs, right? So identifying artificial entities is not even something that right now is is happening, right? So this is just, yeah, again, yet the, another thing that I would like to to drop uh, and to hear the thoughts of uh, all the the panel speakers, um, because uh, again, I, I think that's that's the way that we, we have, that that's a path that we have to undergo in order to, to keep it human. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Luis. Someone want uh, in to interact? I'm eager to, because yeah. when you when you mentioned the word ethical, Luis, uh, it just it just uh, I started burning uh, because I just had a, an actual chat with GPT about that, and and Chat GPT returned an answer that it all depends on actually the marketers, as in human marketer intention of using the data, and for years now we have seen marketers just trying to use the data. And I specifically asked GPT this question. So is marketing and human interest opposite? Because the data is used to track, to sell more and sell faster, right? And sell for more. And at the same time, humanity is all about um, common sense and knowing that we don't convert, we don't change partners, lives, apartments, cars, you know, overnight just because of data. And, and to me, this is... I so like this because we are in the middle of uncanny valley. I feel like exactly down the middle because on one hand, I'm not a true believer in privacy, which might be very unpopular opinion. I, I totally believe in GDPR and protecting people's, you know, names and data. But privacy, those people who pretend to um, defend privacy don't really do anything interesting or illegal. So it's more theoretical. But yeah, the, to the point, uh, connecting the data which can be used, its data is agnostic. I don't know if you if you will agree, but it's just there. But the intent of the person using it for the benefit of their audience or for the benefit of their accounting department, you know, that's the, the main difference. And we have seen economy driven by just the accounting departments. I see you smile, so I'll stop here. <laughs> no, that, that, that's exactly it. The issue it has to do. But at the same time, we as marketing professionals are going to be the guys responsible for uh, bringing the metaverse to the hands of people. So we are the guys that are most probably going to influence people's uh, first experiences, first impressions of their these platforms that, uh, that we are building, right? So that's why it's so important for us to take a responsible stance. To take a responsible position and that's why i think it's so important also for not just us to say okay so the users need to educate themselves they need to know why the, the data is going to be used no we also need to like take a responsible stance on our side and do what we really want to do in order for us to keep it human 
or else what we're just doing actually is trying to uh, make a quick buck and and that's it and that's uh, and and it's all good no it's not because again we're not keeping it human so uh the the topic about like uh, uh walking the talk i think it's it's really really important at this time and again like for instance uh sorry uh, just a, a, another quick one xr augmenting like for instance right now in my office i can like put in here like uh, an augmented dispenser of i don't know maybe uh, alcohol like beer i, I can like uh, put it here and uh, maybe i can like order beer or uh, drugs from uh, uh, the Netherlands and right now I'm speaking from Lisbon and uh, I can put it here but the same way I can put it like in schools I can put it in like churches I can augment pharmacies I can augment anywhere right and that experience will be shown by to me inside that specific context my memory of that experience will be in that context so again um how can that work right um again sorry for yeah i'd like what... to come in here um, and yeah, so yeah. this is really fascinating um talking about you know ethics so we haven't managed to agree on a common set of ethical standards for web 2 in the past so it's very challenging to come up with that for web 3 so i'm a member of the metaverse standards forum which um, is leading the way in helping organisations to cooperate and develop interoperability standards for a sort of more open and inclusive metaverse. And it includes members from like lots of different metaverse standards groups as a, a consortium. Um, and it, it brings me on to you know, sort of the moral issues like bullying and toxicity. And so we'd like to think that the metaverse is different from the real world a place where open and public space for people to push for human rights, to make the, the entire space safe for everyone. But that's not the case. And it's challenging to stop trolls bullying people online. And there's a call in some of the places for action for uh, the metaverse police so it would be very expensive to police a virtual world. So we need to find a way for the metaverse to police itself. So there's a few things we can do to try and protect users. Now, at the moment, we're reasonably good at creating safe spaces for children online. Um, but we need to expand that to other targeted groups. And it could be things like allowing users to set permissions deciding whether they want users from other groups to see or interact with their avatar, their data. You, you might have to set up a friends list. Um, avatars could create a safe area, say a, a meter around them where people couldn't sort of inappropriately sort of touch or, or push their avatar. And we've mentioned artificial intelligence. So there are tools to detect toxicity in speech. You know, if someone is being abusive to you um, online um, and you can report whoever the aggressor is. Um, there's some interesting thoughts on how to deal with people who break the rules in the metaverse. We could um, give offenders timeouts. We could mute them. We could ban them from that metaverse area where the, the breach occurred. We could liquidate their avatar. We could withhold rewards from their wallet. Um, you know, there's all sorts of ways that we can police it um, to encourage good behaviour. Uh, thank you, Shaming, for mentioning yeah. this. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. We are yeah. both part of the member of uh, of the uh, forum and... Um, but um, actually, I myself has also a background in the journalism and the communication. And um, actually, I want to raise something here is that I fully agree with what Shaman just mentioned. We, we haven't really have this global charter or regulator of Web2 um, because currently there is this complexity. Uh, I have done a lot of work in development of digital China. Because as we all know, China has a completely different digital ecosystem. And um, that is creating also an, another layer of complexity. Uh, and then sometimes if we discuss about uh, the data, uh, like the uh, privacy, uh, I think 
globally, you have like three big approach, the American approach, European approach, and Chinese approach. And then, of course, at the same time, we see also a rise of different regions, like sometimes we use the term global south. So I think I noticed that sometimes in Europe, now we are all in Europe, I'm also physically in Europe, we discuss a lot of things, but it's almost like we ourselves are also in an information cocoon because there's a lot of real world challenge in other part of the world. And so sometimes I have this idealistic drive that I feel like, okay, maybe metaverse is an area for this global uh, citizen movement. Because what I see in a lot of um, citizen awareness, in a lot of uh, maybe like underrepresented areas, especially I see a lot of projects, Web3 projects from Asia, they are less more for the commercial, but more for, for example, like uh, civil rights uh, projects. While in different regions, the Web3 project is maybe for the commercial benefits. So it's very interesting to kind of already we think about this. And at the same time, it's amazing that you also mentioned about ChatGPT. Uh, this happens so fast. And I think last year, everyone is talking about metaverse. All the VCs want to invest something. And now no one talk about Nobody. it. No ChatGPT. But ChatGPT is highly, highly biased because most yes. of the data, data sets comes from, I think, the West. Uh, and then there's also a large part of the part of the world. So the, the, the fear here is also technology is widening the gap between mm -hmm. those who have the access and those who yeah. haven't. So I think that's also another thing that, okay, who is taking the lead of shaping the metaverse? So, I mean, our title is like New Year of Marketing and Advertising. But again, marketing and advertising, I think it comes from a, a, a completely like, I would say, propaganda type of... Uh, uh, ideology. So I, 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 I don't have an answer. Yeah, I do agree. Uh, and I uh, often uh, mention uh, uh, an essay written uh, more than uh, 100 years ago uh, by uh, Gustave Le Bon, a French uh, philosopher about uh, mass psychology. And when it's, it's uh, fundamental, when you talk about marketing, you, you understand the psychology of the masses. And when you read it, Today, it's old French, so it's a bit uh, tricky, but it's so accurate, you know, you, you, it is talking about what we are currently facing all together, and it's it's really fascinating. I would like to, to, to also have the, the point of view of Adil. Actually, uh, they, they mentioned a very important point that having the access, you know, in the Middle East, they, they, they still have this challenge, the speed of internet, you know, we are talking about people, they, they even themselves, they can't see their stories because the, the speed of, of, of the internet is so bad. But at the same time, we also, as we are working in conflict zones, we, we have our constant forms, for example, you know, as part of ethical guideline, we should we we try to to explain for them what are we doing and how this thing it will be shown because they they don't have access. The, even if you are trying to scan the QR code, it's so slow. They can't we we can't scan it. For example, in, in areas like Africa, some places in Africa or Syria or Yemen, you can't scan it because it's so slow. So we need to explain to them how we are working on this and they need to be educated at the same time because they they don't know how to use VR headset you know we are at this point in this place but we believe that this is the future even even if it's in Europe or, or uh, USA it's the present but in this region it's the future we need to work more on this how to use these tools how to invest with these tools as you mentioned um, uh, working on ethical guidelines is so important because we are uh, we are working on conflict zone we need to be sure that we are trying to um, to, to, to deliver this story in a right way so uh, I, I agree with them about this uh, ethics guideline, about the, the challenges of the internet, the speed of the internet, uh, having access to this metaverse. People, a lot of people, they don't know what is metaverse uh, about. Yeah, thanks to you and to, to, to highlighting this uh, real uh, issue because we, we can't talk about mass adoption if you don't consider that you, you, you just... Uh, 
talk about. Guys, uh, we are uh, now uh, already at the end of this uh, panel discussion. Thanks for sharing uh, your thoughts, your point of view. It's highly inspiring. I'm really glad to see that uh, you all guys are uh, human-centric. Uh, just quickly, a last word to close uh, this uh, panel discussion. Okay, so I'll go first. If nobody okay. wants, I'll go first because I have okay. a question and it might be good for the end because as I watched, it might be a stretch, but I watched the gaming industry and Twitch and how sometimes the community itself goes against harassment and goes to defend certain, certain people in that area. So my thesis for the end, we didn't even go to marketing, but my thesis is that humans will keep it human. And I'm, my heart wants to believe that every day there will be more people believing in equity, equality, you know, humanity in the internet. And they will s just simply speak up when something is wrong. And then the community will speak up and that we as, a huma as humanity will just advance because technology proved that it cannot kill humans. We're still here and we still think the way we did 100,000 years ago. So thanks to you. Thanks to you. So yeah. wants, yeah. I want to chime in because I love what you just mentioned because maybe we will in the end change the panel title uh, into the metaverse, uh, the metaverse, a new era of human interaction. Humanity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of humanity. I think uh, that that will be the no, best. The, final just look at our interactions here on Telegram at how we treat each other. You know, it's it's on us. It's on us. These five, six hundred people to actually build this future. Thanks to you guys, it was uh, fascinating and really uh, glad uh, and honor one more time. And uh, for me, it's a real uh, a brief, uh, real moment of hope to see that there is uh, still a lot of people who, who consider human first and are not de deifying technology at uh, any cost. Thanks a lot for taking part of this uh, first uh, Web3 Stronger Together Summit and uh, I hope to see you soon. And uh, don't uh, hesitate to give me a sign. I would like to continue to discuss with you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye -bye. Awesome. Thanks again to our guests, and thank you everyone for listening. Thanks also to the Barium Music team for providing their music. You can check them out on barriammusic.com. All of the supporting information is on our website, blockchainrecorded.com. You can listen to us on Google, Apple, and Amazon Podcasts, as well as on YouTube, Spotify, Radio Public, and Stitcher. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube, where we are super grateful for your support. Stay tuned for our next episode.